Electric cars tend to be really good at space. Because there's no engine or awkwardly shaped exhaust and the batteries are in the back, they tend to be good at stretching out their size. The thing is, up to this point, if you wanted more than five seats, then you would essentially be forced into something that was a van with windows, or you'd have to buy a Tesla Model X, which costs £100,000, and you can't buy one of them at the moment anyway. And that's no good for those of us who don't like Postman Pat jokes and actually have overdrafts. Thing is, this might be a bit of an answer. It's the new pure electric Mercedes EQB, and it comes with a seven seat option. But before we get into that, please do like and subscribe and let us know what you think of the EQB in the comments because I kind of like to hear what you think. Also, log on to electrifying.com if you want to know anything about cars with a plug and we're here to clear the air. So, the Mercedes-Benz EQB, basically a fully electric version of Merck's GLB, an SUV that was designed to have an actual piston engine under the bonnet, which is not ideal when you want to take full advantage of electric power. But as we said, this is one of the very few pure electric cars that can seat seven souls, and that's not to be sniffed at. At launch in the UK, there'll be a pair of dual-motor four-wheel drive models, one a bit faster than the other, and a cheaper, slower, single-motor version coming later. For now, we're talking at over 50 grand for the slightly less powerful 4x4 version and a few thousand more for this one, the EQB 350 4MATIC. Have you got that? Good. So there's no great surprises with the way that the EQB looks. Now, the way Mercedes names its models is that the first two letters give you an idea as to what it is and the last one is an idea of size. So an EQB is EQ, which is electric, and B means it's slightly bigger than an EQA and not quite as big as an EQC. You get that? So that means you end up with an SUV that looks like pretty much every other mid-sized SUV. There's no outlandish styling here. This is electric power by stealth. Okay, so it's got a new nose, which is the kind of EQ family face. And there's some little blue highlights around the car, some little EQB badges, some new wheels. And down at the back, it has got a wraparound light bar that is quite slick, but there's nothing here to scare you, which actually I think is, is quite nice in a way because you're easing yourself into the world of electric and away from petrol or diesel. It's not gonna freak you out at all. All in all though, I think it's fine. It's perfectly uncontroversial. <laughs> uncontroversial is a good way to describe it in here as well, especially if you've driven any modern Mercedes because this is basically like a GLB would be. One of the things that actually really annoys me is it's still got what is essentially a transmission tool right here, and it's not storage, it's solid, apart from these little cup holders. And that annoys me because most bespoke electric cars have a big space here, and this car doesn't feel spacious because of that. It's a little bit annoying. Saying that, it has got these two 10-inch screens here, and they are really quite slick. Everything works really nicely and it has loads of information. It's really crisp and clear. It makes it feel expensive. The front seats are nice and comfy. It's quite an upright driving position and the little things I like, like it's got physical controls for the air con down here and then a little touch pad in the middle here, which has got a little heel of your hand rest. So you put your, your palm there and then you can just make all of the different screens do what you want. Although it is very sensitive. So I have changed the radio station randomly a few times, but then again, I have got big ham hands. As you might expect for a car that costs over 50,000 pounds, there are loads of gadgets as standard and a load of driver assistance systems. But if you want the full download on that, then you best head over to electrifying.com where everything is available to you look at. Otherwise, this will be a very long review. And um, that's actually about it. If I didn't know this was an EQB and I hadn't seen some of these very specific EQB charging data screens, I might not know this car had batteries under the floor. So this is where the EQB scores against rivals like Audi's Q4 e-tron or BMW's iX3, because eventually you will be able to option this car with two little jump seats that will live in the boot. The basics are good no matter which one you choose. Decent first row, rear passenger space, with sliding seats, and a generous boot that's also a useful shape. There's no frunk though. Boo, it seems to be full of bits of electrical motor. 
Option the third row and they fold away completely and individually into the floor which is good and they have a neat mechanism. One thing to note though, it's a bit of an effort to get people into the two rearmost seats and when you do, they can't be giants. Even Mercedes admits that these are more occasional seats than full-time places for adults but for those times when you need emergency multiple-person transport, they're ace. Don't forget, until Tesla sorts out the 7-seat option for the Model Y or brings back the Model X, this is the only place you're going to find a 7-seat option outside of a van with windows. It's a bit of a shame that the EQB seems to be a little bit off the pace when it comes to range and charging. Not terrible, but certainly not moving the game on. In terms of range, there's a 66.5 kWh battery that should see 260 miles on the official cycle, which would mean about 200 in the real world. There's 11 kW AC capability, which is nice, but the EQB only gets a maximum of 100 kW of DC charging, which means it can't take full advantage of the larger ultra-rapid chargers that are popping up. Still, you're only looking at 35 minutes to charge from 10 to 80% on 100 kW or above, and just over an hour on the more common 50 kW chargers. A home wall box will see flat to full in just under 11 hours, but bear in mind that though the EQB doesn't actually have an inbuilt charge timer, so if you want to take advantage of cheap nighttime rates for electricity, you'll need to have a smart charger at your house, because the car isn't actually that smart. That's one of the reasons it gets scored down in our electrifying efficiency rating, and is only good enough for a B. There are more details about that on the website. As far as driving goes, well, the EQB actually quite surprisingly hits the spot quite nicely. This four-wheel drive model is actually rear-wheel drive most of the time for efficiency and only switches into four-wheel drive when it needs extra traction or the speeds get a little bit higher. And generally, I quite like it. It works too. When you put your foot down in this 350 model, <laughs> Its turn of speed is actually quite surprising. But when you're not being a hooligan, you can knock this car back into sport or eco modes, and then it knocks the car back quite significantly. So if you're in comfort or eco, then you get an 80 mile an hour top speed, which is enough, and a sort of softer throttle response, which makes it much more relaxing. If you switch it into sport, you get a lot more throttle response. The steering's a bit different, but the throttle becomes a bit of an on-off switch. It's very jerky, quite jiggly, far better to knock it back into comfort and just swan around being a bit more relaxed. That's where the EQB feels best is when you're just basically being calmer. It's not a sports car so the sport mode's a bit incongruous and when you do do that you can use a lot more of the brake regen which you access from these paddles here. So if you pull on the left hand one you increase the brake regeneration and you can put it into D- minus, which basically makes it all but one pedal. It's actually more aggressive than I remember and you can drive it around town or like here where there's loads of roundabouts and basically never touch the friction brake which is quite good. It's not the most aggressive I've ever felt but it is enough. There's also a thing called situation optimized regen when you're in eco mode which basically gives you the maximum regeneration possible according to what you're doing at the time. So that works pretty well. It's a new bit of tech and I really enjoy it. Do you know, it's a lot better in comfort and eco, just more relaxed. It's a good car, you know, you can see out of it, I've got plenty of vision. It's quite square, so it's easy to place on the road, it's not too big. Everything about it is fine. With less range than a lot of its rivals and charging ability that is nowhere near class leading these days, the EQB might look a little bit last generation on paper. It's not helped by the fact that this car is still based on a GLB that is used to having a petrol or diesel up front, and that makes it even more obvious when you can see the obvious advantages of having something that's bespoke, like, I don't know, Skoda Enyaq or VW ID4. But in reality, the fact that you can option seven seats, albeit the seats in the back are quite small, and the fact that this car is very relaxing to drive means that it does have some appeal. This is not a car that wears its electrified heart on its sleeve, but it is a very nice Mercedes. If you like Mercs, you'll probably like this car. So this is a solid effort from Merc, but not a groundbreaking one. As ever, if you'd like to know more about the EQB or any of its rivals like the Audi Q4 e-tron or the BMW iX3, or even the VW ID4 or Skoda Enyaq, 
then please do log on to electrifying.com for all the latest news, reviews and opinions.